Hey, what's going on, guys? I thought I'd throw together a quick explanation of this IR blaster prototype I've put together. Um, I decided, you know, instead of starting from scratch, since that's a lot of work, I'll just walk you through what I've created here. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one correlation with the diagram or schematic on the website, but it's fairly close. Essentially what I've done on the wiring diagram is I've reversed the order. So for example, the sensor here is out front, where in the, in the diagram it's in the back. I did that so it would be easier for you guys to follow along how I wired it up, but I'm gonna walk you through it right now. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with this IR receiver right here real quick. Uh, it's the TSOP4838, I believe. Um, essentially it's pinned out with three sort of values. You have the output, the ground in the middle, and VCC, which is in this case hooked up to five volt power on the Pi. So if we follow this red jumper cable here, it's actually connected to the five volt pin I don't know if you can see that right there. Looking at the PCB more closely, we can see that on this right side, uh, it gets five volt power and then we're bridging this connection over to this red LED. So the theory behind this red LED is apparently some of these sensors are bad when you purchase them. It's a fairly common occurrence. So when we actually start sending it infrared codes from a remote this LED should light up and if it doesn't then you'll know very quickly that you have a bad sensor and you need to switch it out. This actually happened to me when I first set this up. So the second pin right here uh, that correlates to this brown wire just goes straight to the ground so on the Pi it's set to this third pin. I don't know if you can see that right there. Uh, so that's really straightforward. And finally, the last pin, which is output, is connected to this white jumper cable. And this goes to GPIO18. So this is the input here. I'm sorry for the obstruction on that view. But right here, this is GPIO18. So essentially how it works is when the code hits the receiver, it sends the output signal down the white wire to GPIO 18 and also the this 200 ohm resistor is hooked up to the same output pin. So it'll send power and theoretically light this LED. So we know that we're getting the codes and that that input gets directly fed into the Pi for the LIRC package to, um, you know, interpret so that you can map out the codes. That way you can send them later. So moving on, that sort of, you know, describes the infrared receiver setup. So if we look at the infrared LED output over here on the left, it's somewhat similar. Um, again, the main piece here is the BC547 transistor. So this also has three uh, pinouts. Uh, you have the collector, which is number one, base two in the middle, and the emitter. So essentially how this works is, we'll start from right to left. The pin three right here, which is the emitter, is hooked up to the, let me check the, is it the anode? Cathode, there we go. The cathode of the infrared LED. And then the anode is hooked up to this yellow jumper cable, which goes all the way back to the three volt power right here on the Pi. I don't know if you can see that. So moving on to the second pin, which is the base, I've essentially bridged it over and you have this 220 ohm resistor that's hooked up to it and then that's tied to this 
jumper cable which goes to GPIO number 22 right here on the pod. And then finally you have the uh, the final pin right here which is the collector and that's hooked up to ground. So the theory behind this how it's going to work is you take your infrared device which is you know could be like a TV remote we're going to um, hit this infrared receiver and it it's going to map out the code so we have this uh, software on here open source lurk package that will just map all the codes to the corresponding buttons and then once we have that configuration generated then we can output those commands via the this infrared LED here so just to know I want to note the orientation of the LED so I believe I said this was uh, cathode, anode, and this is anode, cathode. But honestly, if you mix them up, just flip them around until you can get it to work. So one way to test out the the output to see if it's working, as we don't have you know the visual feedback like we do on the IR receiver, is to switch this out with a regular LED. So if you have, for example, one of these you know, normal LEDs, you can switch out this infrared LED and then run a basic, you know, LED Python script to make GPIO number 22 to see if it blinks. And then that way you'd know that your, you know, circuit logic is good. And that's pretty much all that goes into wiring up the IR receiver and the IR blaster. And let's move on to setting up it up on the pod. Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm here and I've just SSH'd into my Pi. This is stock Raspbian, so all I've set up are some preferences. I've enabled VNC and SSH, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go through and get the IR, um, LIRC all set up. So the first thing you wanna do is install the, is it Lurk? Is that how you pronounce it, that package? So you're gonna do a sudo, sudo apt-get install lurk. Let that run through. Enter yes. So once that's done, the next thing is you're gonna do is modify the Etsy modules file. So go ahead and type sudo nano forward slash a Etsy slash modules, hit enter, and you'll be presented with this screen. So essentially you're gonna copy some text Um, you're going to go to the bottom of the file and paste oops, paste these lines. So lurk underscore dev and lurk underscore RPI GPIO. So the input pin we set was 18 and the output will be 22. So once you've added that, control X, Y, enter and that's done, it's saved. You're gonna have to edit another file, so type in sudo nano slash boot slash config.txt. Oh, I made a typo here, my bad. Kinda threw me off there. There we go. And then at the bottom of this file, you're going to add one line. And this will be DT overlay equals blah, 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 
you know, input pin 18, output 22, control X, Y, enter. So that's done. Now we have to modify another file. So type in sudo nano at c modprobe.d slash ir. I'm honestly not sure if this step is required, uh, but I ran into issues when I initially set this up, and this was one of the suggestions. So you might as well just do this. It won't really hurt anything. And then we're going to add one line of this file. Um, go ahead and reboot your Pi. It's going to take me a minute here to reconnect. Okay, there it is. Pi. This is a test device, so I've just left the credentials stock. Whatever, I'm going to wipe this afterwards. So now that we've rebooted, go ahead and type sudo modprobe lurk underscore rpi. And it looks like we're not getting the error, so that's a good sign. And then type sudo kill question, or no, that's a dollar sign, pid of lurk d enter. So yeah, this is pretty common. You should see this usage. Don't worry about it. Just uh, if you see that, that's a good sign. And then finally, we should be able to enter this command next, mode 2 dash d forward slash dev forward slash lurk zero. So now it's waiting. It's waiting for our input. Um, this this is the way that we were going to test to see if it's getting codes. I haven't actually started anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and get this going. So right here I have a generic remote and then I'm just gonna mash on some buttons here real quick and we should see some output. Yeah, you see all that gibberish. That's a good sign. That means our infrared receiver is working and the red LED is blinking, so that's a very good sign as well. So now we've uh, successfully set up the lurk package on the Pi. You can hit Control C to get out of this. We we can see that all the the codes are being sent successfully, and the Pi is interpreting them. So now we're going to move on to the mapping the code sections section. We need to enter this command sudo kill dollar sign pid of lurk d. Of course, I would misspell that. Classic typo. So that's there, and then record dash dash list dash namespace. Is that pipe character? Grab key. It helps if you can type correctly. And that should, this list should return all of the um, buttons for you to record um, in your configuration file. For example, the one that we're gonna do today 
will be key underscore power. So we're going to re record the power key. Essentially, you would go through and record every button that exists on your remote, and then it would generate a configuration file. So you want to save this you know, as a text file or something for you to reference so that way you can look at, up these button names. So now that we have this file, let's go ahead and start recording. So you gotta type that command in one more time, pseudo kill dollar sign pit of alert D get the usage and then we type or I'm going to copy this command because hit enter read through this real quick hit return so now we're going to start pressing buttons on our remote so here we go three two one we move my receiver so it gets better signal. Three, two, one, here we go. Boom. I'm just pressing each button for about a second, cycling through each one in sequential order. So it needs about two lines. I've already went through all the buttons. I'm going back up the remote now. All right, this looks like a good read. We actually have a possible header and trail pulse and repeat code. So now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and record um, the power button. So for example, that command or the button uh, reference was key underscore power. So let's hit, let's type that in. You hit enter and then press the power button and hold it down. So that was good. It went through and it caught it. So now we can record another command. So this time let's get the input input source on our remote. So let's type in, there's no uh, key for input. So we're gonna do key underscore aux for auxiliary. And we're gonna hit enter and then press and hold the input button. So here we go. Enter, press and hold input button and it got it. So finally, the last thing I'm gonna do is record the okay button. So go ahead and type key underscore okay. Same thing here, hit enter and hold the okay button. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna do all the buttons, but that's just an example of how you would do it. So after you've you know, recorded all the buttons that you want, just go ahead and hit enter and it should exit out. So this final bit, um, it's going to ask you to press the same button repeatedly as fast as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and get ready to press the power button, have that pointed at my receiver and hit enter and then start mashing it real quick as fast as you can. So it hasn't found a toggle bit mask and then it just wrote the configuration file. So now we can type ls and type cat lrd.conf and hit enter to examine the configuration file it generated and we can see here this is the actual name of the uh, configuration file this will be important later when we actually test out sending a command um, just make note of this right now and then we can see all of the you know specific remote um, values so the header this is some sort of code and then the repeat code 
And then here are the three codes that we've mapped. So we got key power and this, was it hexadecimal code? Um, so we know this is good. So I'll go ahead and let's just clear our screen real quick. Now what we need to do is we need to copy this over from our home directory into the Etsy directory. Um, now that we verified it's good, so go ahead and type this command in, sudo cp slash home whatever whatever. It's on the website, just go ahead and you know copy paste. So after you've done that, go ahead and restart um, the alert process. So just type in this command here real quick and hit enter. So it's successfully restarted it. And then we're going to double check to see if it took the new configuration file. And we do that by sending this command, irsend list. And again, this is the name that I pointed to, that variable, and go ahead and hit enter, and we should see the three commands we've already mapped. Okay, could not connect to socket, connection refused. So this is a common error that you should, you'll probably run into, and to get around that, the command that you need to input is this, sudo lurk cd, and this flag, dash device, I don't know for some reason it really needs that so we put that in and then go back and we send what we did previously and we should it should be good now yeah there we go so now we have key power key underscore auxiliary and then key okay so we got power input and the okay button so now I'm gonna switch over and show you a demonstration on how this works so I've gone ahead and moved the pie and the prototype IR blaster setup to the TV. So the infrared receiver for the TV is right under the LG symbol, and you can see the the clear infrared LED pointing sort of directly at it. So now we're gonna go ahead and go test it out and send that power command to see if it turns on. Okay, so here um, is the format for sending commands to the IR blaster. IR send, send once. Um, the name, that variable I pointed out to, and the button name, which is key power. So if we hit this, oh, um, right, so again, I restarted, so I forgot I need to start this service real quick, or put this command in, hit enter, now we should be all good, and then we hit this, and it should work. So yeah, now it's good. Okay, so now that we've verified that that command works and actually turns the TV on, let's go ahead and hash out a quick Python script to turn the TV on and change the input source. So this is really um, dependent on your TV, so you're gonna have to tailor it towards your needs. But for example, my LG um, sort of smart TV um, requires a bunch of sleep times. So first thing you need to do is import OS and then we need to import time to initiate the sleep. So right here on line six, OS system, our send once, whatever, key power, this turns the, the TV on. Then I'm gonna wait 12 seconds because it actually has to boot and it takes quite a bit of time. And the way that my TV works, you can't, there's no HDMI one, two, or three buttons. So you have to manually keep pressing input to switch through. So over here, I've just mocked up like three input button presses and I put some sleep time in between them. And then after it switches to, I believe this is HDMI 2, this will get you to HDMI 2, it'll send the OK command. So this is a sample script to turn the TV on and change input source. So depending on what buttons you've mapped and whatever your intent is, you can tailor this to your needs. So yeah, that's... Uh, run down on the code and now you should be good to go. You can apply this logic to any sort of infrared device you have. I actually have plans in the future to rehash that um, breadboard setup so that way I can send two different commands simultaneously because I have a sound bar and the TV. 
So I need to map both of those remotes. And yeah, stay tuned. You know, if you like the material on this channel, you know, feel free to, you know, hit the like button and subscribe. I always appreciate it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.